Hey friends, it's Derek at TCI here. And in this video, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the opposite of building a network. We're gonna talk about destroying a network. So this space that's behind me is being emptied out. Tenants leaving, converting all this to the cloud and they don't need any of it anymore. So I wanna talk a little bit about what it takes to break down one of these networks and things that might trip you up. So if you get stuck cleaning out one of your clients, uh, the tenant uh, landlord agreement requires them to get rid of all the cat six and face plates and stuff that they put in the wall. This will be the way that you do it. First things first, we don't touch this. This belongs to the IT vendor. This is not our, not our Kuleana. In Hawaii, that means our problem, not our problem. So what we do in this situation is we disconnect all of this from the wall and from the network. And then we just work from the panels and the face plates backwards. So here's what I mean by working backwards from the face plates. So what you can see here is that there were data ports here in this wall that had cat six or cat five or whatever in them, telephones. I left some of the plates behind. So there's all kinds of legacy devices that were supported here. And what we're going to be doing whenever we do a cleanup, we don't start up there in the ceiling. We don't just lift tiles and start cutting all the things that we think are LAN cables. What we do instead is we come to identifiable dead end face plates, unscrew them, snip that wire, and then pull that wire up into the ceiling. And then we roll that wire all the way back to the panel. And as you get closer and closer to the panel, you're gonna see more and more uh, cables kind of coalescing, the cable highway gets bigger and bigger, and then you work backwards towards the panel in that way. You can also start at the panel and cut everything there and pull everything away from the panel and go towards a, a common area, a hallway or something like that so that the bundle that you're dealing with is not so uh, oversized, heavy, and difficult to maneuver. Now, the reason that we don't just go straight into the ceiling is that you know, do you want to cut all the white wires, all the LAN cabling? Uh, you know, that's our instinct, but that's the wrong thing to do. When you're up in the ceiling, there are a whole lot of other things that are nothing to do with data. So, Okay, friends, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to share some slides that I used whenever I'm teaching all about networking in class. This network here is from a multi-tenant space, and there's a lot going on. When it comes to deleting this and get ri getting rid of this from the tenant space and making it livable for the next tenant to move in, the first thing you're going to do is remove all of the computer wires. All you gotta do is find the outlet, cut it, and then roll those cables back to wherever the patch panel is located. In addition to the computer lines, you're gonna be removing the phone lines. The phone lines I'm showing here in red and typically they're in the same faceplate as your computer lines. Sometimes they're different. Either way, you're going to cut them and roll back all of the CAT3 networking wires, and you're going to follow them all the way back to the phone system, and you're going to take the phone system off the wall. Everything has to be made to look just the way it was before the tenant moved in and installed all this equipment. If the tenant has any IP cameras, you're going to cut those down as well and roll them back to the NDR. If you find any Wi-Fi access points, those need to come down too. A lot of these spaces are shared by multiple tenants, which means that some of the wires that you find in the ceiling are just passing through. They're still in use, but not by the tenant that you're cleaning up. Could be one of the neighboring spaces or a floor above or below them. Any wire that you can't find the end of and you're not sure where it goes has to stay. If the landlord isn't happy with that, you let them cut it. When everything is said and done and you've removed all the wires that you can locate, there should be still some wires left behind. These will be the traveling wires that might belong to other tenants. It will also be the fire alarm system, any kind of HVAC controls, lighting controls, and any other sensors that might be part of the normal space. Don't destroy anything that you don't think that you can fix. When in doubt, leave it behind. So if you're wondering, is there a lot of Cat6? Like how big of a project is this? Well, 
Uh, as you can see here where the boys are piling up a bin full of the cat six that we've pulled out, there's a ton of it. And it can be deceiving just how heavy this is. So I highly recommend that you have a pickup truck or a cargo van or something like that with you. And you pile all of this cat six into that bin. And then what you're gonna do after this is take it to your local copper recycling location. It's one of the few things in the United States that we can just melt down and do again. Okay, so once you've got everything removed, there's some good things that come of this. The way that this job ends is you take all of this to the recycling center and the good news is you get paid again by them. Your client paid you to empty the space and cover up all the holes in the wall and fix all the holes in the ceiling. And then the recycling guys thank you one more time by writing you a check. <clears throat> so I hope that that gives you some ideas on how to approach a cleanup. Uh, I will show some more detailed work when I get a chance. Next time we're tearing a place apart, I'll put a little bit more effort into it. But that's just one of the jobs that we do here as low voltage installers. Sometimes you're the low voltage deinstaller. So until next time, happy network destroying. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.